Hey, good morning. How is it going? Welcome to the uh, morning live stream. And uh, let's see here what we've got. There we go. We are up and running. Good morning. I hope uh, today's a good one for you so far. Of course, many of our viewers and participants come from all parts of the world. So, of course, all different time zones are represented. So, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you've got going on, I am extremely grateful that you've taken a few minutes to, uh, to stop by and join me this morning. And make sure that if uh, you have a question or a thought, put it down in the uh, YouTube uh, live stream chat. And uh, sometimes I'm able to, to, ask, to answer some of those during the stream. But what I typically do is use that as material fodder for future discussion. And then uh, on Fridays, we do a, um, an all Q&A. Well, today, giving my eyes a rest for my contacts. And uh, I just got out of the shower, so I'm steaming them up. So <laughs> it's, everything's a little foggy here. This morning, I assume you're there. Uh, hey, uh, there we go. Good morning from North Carolina, Minnesota. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for for stopping by this morning. So um, today, I want to talk about something. I feel like I talk about this a lot, and I'm pretty darn sure that I do talk about it a lot. And the reason that I do is because I'm asked the question a lot. But I'm usually asked the question because somebody has been told that. The first thing they need to do when they get into voiceover, maybe you've heard, if you've heard this before, say yes in the chat. You must determine, you got to determine your niche before you do anything else, before you begin to, to jump out into the murky waters, the competitive waters of, of marketing and voiceover. You need to know what your niche slash brand is. Anybody, have you ever been asked or have you ever been told that before? Have you ever heard that bit of information? Well, let me give you my two cents on this. Um, marketing is my thing. I'm an MBA. My background's in business consulting. And, uh, and marketing is probably what I do better than anything else. And I was, um, I, I was a college professor, taught marketing for a number of years. Um, I get it. I understand marketing. And I understand the traditional wisdom that, yes, under, understanding what your niche and your brand is. But I don't think that most business talent or, or not business talent, sorry, voiceover talent or voiceover coaches, especially those with no business ground, our background, understand how that really applies in voiceover. Because the advice is typically coming from people with a more institutionalized traditional viewpoint of voiceover, meaning their business plan is you get a demo, you get a coach, you get an agent, you audition, you audition, you audition, get more coaching, get more auditions, and, and, then, and then hope and pray that, that something catches there. Now, when that is the world and the only world that you operate in, you have to understand when you're dealing with agencies, agencies have inventory of voiceover talent. So think of it this way. Let's say an agency, and they may have more or less depending on the agency, but let's say they have 200 voices, 100 female, 100 male. They're not interested in redundancy or repetitiveness. What they're trying to do is they want a talent to represent a very specific style, brand, point of view. Because, uh, again, with 100 or 200 or 500 talent, when somebody's coming to listen to demos, they need somebody that represents a very specific niche. Makes sense? I think it makes a lot of sense because you don't want 200 people that all basically are all over the place. And I get that. However, if you're just starting off, first of all, an agency is a terrible place to try to go. Even if you have a lot of experience, it should only be a part of your marketing strategy. And very few, very, very, a very small percentage, 0 0.0 whatever, ever, ever actually make that their primary source of income. Uh, it's, you know, if that's your business plan, you know, then um, God bless you. It's, you know, you're on a wing and a prayer and, and hopefully something will work out for you. But you need multiple marketing channels, or as I like to call them, spokes in the wheel, if you want a solid long-term ride. That being said, one of the worst things that you can do in voiceover, in my opinion, is to try to determine right off the bat what your brand or your niche is you know, what your viewpoint, what you're, uh, what you're primarily going to be good at. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You need market research. Now, now here, here's a marketing concept for you. Before you launch out and make a, a huge decision 
as to what your niche or your brand is. You need market research. Market research is not something that you decide. It's not something that a coach decides for you. It's something that the marketplace decides. Any semi-successful company with any sense of business whatsoever is going to do some testing of their product or their service before they make a major investment as to how they're going to market themselves. Now, the um, market research you have at your disposal in voiceover is the response, the feedback that you get from auditioning and marketing yourself. In other words, you don't wait, you start marketing in a very general and a very broad sense. Um, don't narrow yourself down. Don't say, well, you know, I'm going to be a narrator. Oh, you know, I'm going to be an audiobook. book. Uh, that can be a long-term goal. Or I'm going to do TV promos. Or I'm going to do video game characters. Or I just want to do commercials. And again, that might be your long-term goal. And that's if so, that's great. That's another discussion. But when you're first getting started, you need a very broad-based approach because you need to find out what the market's going to tell you you're good at. How do they tell you that? Well, they hire you or they don't hire you. And when they begin hiring you, you need to pay attention to the kind of jobs that you get. You need to listen to what they say about your demo because typically, very frequently, when somebody hires you, they will say, you know, I really liked the way you read this on your demo. I like this commercial, or I like that documentary read, or I like that explainer video read. Do it like that. And what will happen over a period of time, and when I say period of time, we may be talking, talking years. You know, I still take a fairly general, even though I know what my niche is, I, don't, I do a lot more than just that, a lot more. I do a very broad variety of work, which has allowed me to make a very lucrative living all of these years. Um, you know, you still need to keep a very wide open mind and approach to voiceover. But over time, you'll see a pattern develop where, pe where people will start to hire you for a certain kind of work, and they'll start to point to, to, to your demos, and you'll see consistency. They'll begin to request. You know, I come from, I come from also a broadcast background, programming. And, uh, you know, you may think you know what a hit is, but the market will tell you. They'll let you know what a hit is through record sales, um, downloads now, and through requests. You'll, you'll find out what the market likes. Same thing in voiceover. You'll start to get requests, and, and a pattern will begin to emerge, and you'll see what the market primarily likes you for. For me, it's been healthcare. You know, I do, when it comes to commercial work, I would say the vast majority of my commercial work is, is hospitals, healthcare systems. I do, jeez, um, I do hospital healthcare systems all over the country, uh, commercials. It's nothing I set out to do. I wasn't trying to do it. As a matter of fact, that was the last thing on my mind. But that's what the market likes me for. Um, in terms of the narration work that I do, I do tons and tons of pharmaceutical work for just about every major, I think, I think every major uh, pharmaceutical manufacturer. I mean, you know, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Eli Lilly. Uh, I can't, I mean, there's a bunch of them and I do them all. I would have never imagined that. <clears throat> you know, I wanted to do promos. I thought that would be cool. And, you know, the reality is I've got, I've got to do promos. Uh, I've done some, you know, ADR. I, I've done video game character work, not because that was the thing I was really setting out to do, but I, there are people who like me for those jobs. I do a lot more than just healthcare related work. So if you paint yourself into a box early on, you're going to make it difficult for you to get hired. So I understand where that advice is coming from, but let me tell you, there's much more to it than that. You need market research. And the only way to get it is to take a very broad-based approach, throw yourself out there, and see what the market says about you. And even, you know, I've been doing this full-time for 16 years. If you go to my website, buildawees.com, you won't see any focus on healthcare related. It's still very... Um, now, you know, the branding in terms of the style and the, and the colors are a little more corporate because I'm not, you know, a cr crazy, zany, off-the-wall kind of big announcer, uh, et cetera. But I still take a very broad-based approach because my bread, and, my, uh, my bread and butter is more than just hospital work. I do, I do, you know, I do all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. 
So next time somebody says, hey, first thing, got to determine, determine your niche. Before you do a demo, know your niche, know your brand. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I wish people who had, no, well, you know, it would be ideal that people who had no marketing or business background would just would not comment on things they really don't don't understand. But that's not, you know, that's not, not going to happen. So I'm just letting you know that if to be successful long term, you need to let the market tell you. And even knowing that doesn't mean that you will not develop in other ways, that other talents may emerge. And it doesn't mean you can't pursue the things that you want to do most. But first of all, first of all, take a broad based approach. Start making money, for goodness sakes. Get some feedback. Get an understanding of what <coughs> excuse me, the market likes you for. And then you've got something to work with. All right. I feel like I've been on a bit of a rant, and perhaps I have. But it, it frustrates me because... A lot of bad advice makes things difficult for you and your, and your colleagues in voiceover who are really trying hard uh, to build a, a viable voiceover business. And silly advice like that just makes things so much more difficult. And, um, and it, it frustrates me for you. Uh, so let's see here. What do we have? Oh, boy. Wow, a lot of folks on this morning. Uh... Rob got his first out-of-state regional commercial last week. Rob, way to go. That's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, Joe's website is going live within 48 hours. Joe, that's e exciting. Good for you. That's, that's very exciting. Um, Matthew from Michigan, who attended Mallory's Fiverr class night, said the class was awesome. His brain is still spinning from all the info. <laughs> Mine is too, Matthew. Uh, that was, uh, you know, Mallory and I were kind of chuckling about it afterwards. That it is, it's, it's a lot of information. It's essential information, and so you know, the kind of that data dump had to be done because these are things you need to understand. But of course, all of those sessions are recorded, so you can go back and watch them, and you can stop and pause, and you know, you can watch them as many times as you want. You know, they're going to be in, to be, they'll be available indefinitely. And for those of you who didn't go to Mallory's class, now Mallory's on on track to make over $120,000 this year on Fiverr alone in voiceover. And so, I mean, she's a rock star uh, on that platform. And if you want to learn from somebody who's actually doing it and getting it done, man, I, I just highly recommend you check out the class, uh, MalloryFiverrTraining.com, MalloryFiverrTraining.com. Yeah, you can certainly still sign up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night's class is already archived. It's available now. You can watch it at your convenience immediately, and then you can be live at the, the remaining three sessions. Oh, Homewood, Illinois. I, I used to live not too far from Homewood, about a half hour from there or so. Had some friends from that area. Okay, well, let's see. Just a quick glance through here. Oshkosh, Ontario, Tampa, Alabama. Minnesota, Washington. Awesome. Guys, thanks so much for being here, as always. Uh, it's always nice to know I'm not just, you know, shouting into the wind. I'm glad to, <laughs> that you're there to hear because I think these are topics that are important. My passion is for you to be successful, i.e. be profitable in voiceover. And so that's why I share this information. Uh, thanks for listening and not only listening, but using the information uh, to do things like get work and make money in voiceover. Uh, because, again, I want it to be more than a hobby for you. Thanks so much. Have a good day, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you.